Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this uh, tutorial I want to show you how to use a spreadsheet that I've created to work with correlation coefficients, which are a uh, very common statistical measure and an excellent measure of effect size for the relationship between two variables or differences between groups. Um, when using correlation coefficients, there are certain shortcuts you can use if you have probability values or confidence intervals or critical values. And I'm going to show those later when I talk about how to clean up correlation matrices in a way that I think them makes them much more presentable. But first I want to show you this. Now what I have here is a um, is a web address, a URL, for a uh, web page that I created. I actually created it in uh, stack, excuse me, in Google Docs. But if you just go to this address, so I'm going to go right here. That's the page I was looking at a moment ago. And just type this in and hit return. Um, that's an alias, and what it's going to do is it's going to download a file. You saw it downloading there for a second. And I come over here to my downloads folder, and it's correlation probability formulas. It's an Excel spreadsheet, and here it is. Make it a little bit bigger here. And um, this actually is the same link that we just were barely at. Uh, I got some instructions here. Let me show you basically what I have here is if you're going to be uh, working with correlation coefficients and you're going to be doing hypothesis testing, you need to know the critical values. Now, if you're in SPSS or PASW, it tells you the, the probability level for each correlation coefficient, but it can be a very cumbersome presentation. So it can be helpful to simply know for the number of people you have in your study, what, for instance, um, this is a number that you can put in, the number of people in your study, and then this right here is the critical value at the uh, 05 percentage level. Now what you need to know is that this is a two-tailed value. And so it's actually a plus or minus 0 0.312. Here, watch what happens if I change it, for instance, to 60. Change that to 60. And this value, it's, it gets smaller. It doesn't have to be as extreme. So anything above a correlation of 2.54 or below a correlation of negative 0.254 will be statistically significant for uh, data from 60 people. We can change it again. I can go to 160. <coughs> and you see how the values become smaller. Uh, 0.05 is the normal cutoff point. 0.10 is something we use if we're fudging in um, student research and we simply didn't have time to gather a lot of data. But also 01 and 001 are common cutoffs and it's helpful to know all of those. Again, I'll show how I do a color-coded correlation matrix in another a tutorial and I use these when deciding how to color things. Um, I also have some inferential tests. Um, if you put down your sample size and the observed correlation that you have for something, so for instance let me go uh, let, let me go to a, say I have 60 people and an observed correlation of 0.4. That tells me right here that my probability level, this is a two-tailed, uh, of having a correlation greater than 0.4 or less than negative 0.4, the probability value is 0.001. It's a very small value. Um, and that's this one. This is what goes in with a hypothesis test. Now this one right next to it stands for the probability of uh, replication. That's what I describe right here. Um, it's something that's used in a number of journals right now. It's sort of, it's sort of a complement to um, the probability value. And then it indicates if basically if you were to do an exact replication of your study but with a different sample from the same population, what's the probability that you would get a statistically significant finding in that one? Well, you know, not surprisingly, it's a 98% chance. It's real high because this one's real low. But I want to show you also how to use confidence intervals. Uh, confidence intervals can be a wonderful way um, to present correlations. If you look in medical journals, they'll often present confidence intervals for their effect sizes. Um, and what I have here is a whole bunch of different uh, levels. Now, the most common is this one that's in green. It's the 95% because it corresponds to the 5% um, uh, probability value for a hypothesis test. You know, 5, 95, it adds up. Um, and what this says, if, for instance, if we take an observed correlation of 0.4 for a group of 60 people, there's a 95% chance that the true value is somewhere between 0.163 and a correlation of 0.594. It's kind of a broad range, but 
uh, the important thing with confidence intervals is zero is not in there. That is, both sides of the confidence interval are positive. On the other hand, if you come down, whoa, sorry about that. If you come down here to a 99.9% .9 confidence interval, and you kind of have to be a sucker for punishment to do that one, it won't ever work, won't work very often. You see, for instance, that this one's negative and this one's positive. It would not be statistically significant at the 99.9% .9 confidence interval. Anyhow, mostly the reason I wanted to show you this is I have a way of calculating critical values which I use in color coding a correlation matrix, which I will show you shortly in another tutorial. Anyhow, I hope that's been helpful for right now. Thanks for watching.